Hello creators, I am the producer Owen. For people new to game development, using the trigger action feature may pose some difficulties, yet it is a crucial part of the horror game creation process. Today, I will introduce what trigger action is and how to use it. To begin with, go to the Yaha Desktop Project Management page, click on the entrance to create a new project. Within this section, we have added a horror game kit. Click on it, and now we enter the main interface of the horror game kit. Click on Monster Cutscene, and the Trigger Action editing page will appear on the right. What is Trigger Action? You can understand it as a series of events that will be triggered when a certain condition occurs or is met. In games, the driving force behind all plot progressions or interactions between scenes and players occurs only after certain conditions are met. Think of the trigger as a condition used to activate multiple events below. This part is easy to understand. First, the default state is open, indicating that the trigger action is in an activated state at the beginning of the game. You can think of it as being on standby at all times, and once the conditions are met, this trigger action will execute. The reason for designing this switch is that some complex mechanisms may have the trigger action initially in a closed state, and you do not want it to trigger right away. For example, in the don't look back jump scare mechanism, we may want the effect to be triggered only when approaching a corpse or a wall. In this case, if the default state is open, it might trigger the condition judgment from a far distance. When to open it depends on. You can control the switch status of this trigger action with other trigger actions to achieve a chain or conditional control. Second, Trigger once determines whether this trigger action can be repeated. For example, when I enter this trigger area, the monster cutscene, which is a pre-recorded animation, will play when the player enters this area. Then there are other actions, such as the ghost appearing, controlled by the show object function. Of course, I added a two second delay. Currently, this section is enabled. This means that when the player first enters this area, the animation of the ghost appearing will be triggered. After the trigger ends, if the player enters again, this animation will not be displayed. This is common in many games, where cutscene animations may only play once. So, if you need it to repeat, keep it closed. If not, keep it open. You may wonder why there are two switches here. Currently, trigger action supports a one-to-many relationship, but lacks the capability for complex logic judgments involving multiple conditions to trigger actions. If your scenario is more complex, you may need to add new trigger actions for sequential control. What does disable collision mean in the actions below? It means that after playing the animation, you certainly don't want the ghost to keep blocking your way. If you don't disable this, the ghost will stay there and the player might not be able to pass. In most cases, you need to disable it. To sum up, that's about it for the content about trigger action. For other aspects, feel free to explore more when making games. I hope everyone can use it to create innovative mechanism design.